What's up guys, hope you all farmed enough lanterns from the KNK event, because no one wants to go back to Stormy Seas for those things. Well, if you didn't... Mm. NOW YOU FUCKED UP! In any case, Anaplex announced the next two events, Caldea Boys and Dante's event, but since Caldea Boys is just a banner and nothing else, that needs no explanation, at least not from me. What does need discussing, though, are the challenge quests that'll come with Dante's event, the Prison Tower's Howling Demon of... Vengeance, but since that title's a bit too edgy for most of us, except for those of you who are actually Dante's fanboys, and girls I suppose, we'll just refer to this event as the Prison Tower event from now on. The Prison Tower event, while not a full-blown event in the likes of K&K or even Valentine's, will have a set of challenge quests that if you beat them will give you a good chunk of ascension materials, summoning tickets, and a lore. And there are seven of these challenge quests. These quests are meant for quote-unquote high-level players, or in other words, quests meant for people whose accounts look something like this. But anyone can do them so long as you've cleared London, so inevitably that means that a lot of free-to-plays and cheat-to-plays will try to do these quests too, since, well, free shit. So, I, being your friendly neighborhood whale, want to try to help you guys out with this video that's got team composition suggestions for free-to-plays and cheat-to-plays alike. But as I do with every video like this, a few disclaimers first. In this video, I'll assume that you have access to all the free-to-play servants, or all the servants who are three stars and under, and I also assume that you have all the welfare servants that this game's released thus far. I'm also going to assume that all your servants are max level, at least MP3, and with skills at at least level 4. Because let's face it, if you don't meet these arbitrary requirements that I've made up right here on the spot, chances are you're probably not ready for these challenge quests in the first place. In addition, keep in mind that this video is only intended to help build your own strategies for beating these challenge quests, so by no means are the team compositions that I'm suggesting here the uh, be-all and end-all that'll guarantee you that you'll, you know, steamroll these quests no problem. Make amendments wherever you need to based on your own accounts, available servants, and craft essences, and I'll also be putting this video out over a week before the challenge quests actually arrive, so you have at least a little bit of time to prepare whatever you feel like you need to prepare. Lastly, I'm going to assume that you have at least one whale on your friends list whose servants you can use as support. But the problem with this is that since I've never played JP myself, I'm not 100% sure that you can bring whatever support you actually want. You can take a level 90 MP4 Dante's as your support for every quest except for the second part of the last one, and from what I've been able to gather on my own, it doesn't seem like you're restricted to using only him. But in case the game forces you to take Dante's, well, fuck. So let's get started with the first quest, which looks something like this. Most of the challenge quests here in this event have certain gimmicks about them that you need to be aware of. In this first quest, Phantom has a special skill that reduces the quick performance of your whole party by 80%, so obviously it won't be ideal to bring along quick base servants against him. My recommended team composition for this is Hector, Santa Altar, Support Waver, Caster Liz, David or Nobu, and Media. Use the first wave to charge up both Hector's and Santa Altar's MP so that when you get to the second wave, you can use both of their MPs to clear it. Hector's tactics and Santa Altar's mana burst should be enough buffs to have them clear second wave on their own, so it might be worth saving Waver's buffs for third wave. Or if you have a support Waver who's got all 10s and skills, you could use the Atlas Academy MC to reduce cooldown on his buffs so that you can immediately reuse his skills again in time for the third wave. For third wave, get as much damage out of Hector and Santa Alta here before they die. Ideally, those two should die first due to class disadvantage. Your backline should be able to finish the job. Switch around Caster Liz and Nobu or David depending on if you want to kill off the Skellies first or not. And because everyone in this team only has one quick card with the exception of Hector, Phantom's anti-quick skill doesn't really matter all that much. Again, the only exception is Hector, but by the third wave, he's already done his job, so if he goes down, that's fine. Here's the second quest. Fergus has a special skill that increases his MP charge, though by how much, I'm not sure. Neither the FGO wiki nor Trinipedia say specifically by how much, so I'll just assume by one, like Golden Rule or something. My recommendation for this is St. George, Hans, Ushi, Alex, or Teach, support Gil or support Orion, and any other archer that you might have. The default Mystic Code or the Atlas Academy one are preferred here because you need to have St. George survive for as long as possible since he needs to deal with class disadvantage against the Chimeras who are both assassins, so use either Evade or Invil on him. Build up as much MP on everyone as possible, and the most ideal situation is that you can get out of the first wave with not only everyone's MPs charged, but also with St. George still alive somehow. But expect George to die before second wave and have Alex or Teach replace him. 
Blow your MPs on second wave to get rid of the demon fast. For the third wave, how you beat this depends on the kind of support you have. If you have Gil, attack Fergus to do as much damage to him as possible before Gil comes in. If you have Orion, kill the Chimera first so that you don't have to worry about it. Because of how strong Orion is against males, I actually recommend that you try to find a support Orion over a support Gil. The third quest looks like this. Blue Man has a special skill that reduces your entire party's MP gauges by 20%. So your team could be St. George, Ushi, Hans, Matthew, yes I do call her Matthew instead of Mashu because I'm just a hipster like that I guess, support Lancelot or Frank with Limb Broken Case Scope and Alex or Teach. Same deal as the second quest, use Invil on George so that he can tank the first wave of hits while everyone else charges MPs. And again, if George makes it out of the first wave alive, that's ideal, and even better if he has his own MP charge too, since the enemies here are berserkers, and George has a better shot at making it out alive than in the previous quest. And again, for second wave, blow all MPs to take down the golem quick. And for the third wave, try to do as much damage as you can with everyone in your front line. Your ideal situation is that you can get Ushi's MP off a second time to damage blue guy as much as you can, but because of enemy class mix, someone in your team is going to die eventually, and blue guy's MP charge decrease skill is going to be pretty annoying. Use your support Lancelot or Frank whenever they come in to deal massive damage to everyone, and everything after that is just cleanup. Frank is better here due to her raw MP damage output, but Lancelot is a little bit better for more sustained damage thanks to his MP attack buff and crit star generation. This is the fourth quest. Saber Guy has a skill that increases the MP charge of the entire enemy team by one, and the generic soldier also has a skill that puts a taunt on one of your servants for two turns. Use St. George, Nobu, Assassin Shiki, support single target Berserker with a limb broken K scope, Uriel, and Robin. Use first wave to charge MPs as usual, and have Nobu and Shiki clear second wave with their MPs. The third wave is where things get tricky. Ideally, George should be the one who goes down first to bring in your support Berserker, either Kentoki or Herc. Have them immediately target John so that she goes down as quickly as possible. Uriel is the hard counter to Gi, and Robin can nuke whoever's left standing. Keep in mind that this third wave isn't necessarily all that threatening, because both Gi and John have non-damaging NPs. Though, Gi does give himself a 50% attack buff, which isn't so bad since he debuffs his own defense by 50% at the same time, and we all know Jean stuns herself whenever she uses her MP. You could also bring along a support Jean instead if you're more comfortable with stalling. I also recommend the Atlas Academy MC, since you can give invul to whoever gets the taunt debuff from the generic soldier in the third wave, and then get rid of it if you want to with the debuff clear, and the CDR skill can help someone get their skills back more quickly. Here's the fifth quest. Caligula has a skill that increases his crit rate by 80 frickin' percent, and the Proto Homunculi both have a skill that recovers all enemies' HPs by 6,000. Their team, not yours. Your team, then, could be Caesar, Caster Liz, a support saber like Mordred or Artoria or whoever, Hans with Dragon's Meridian, and whoever else your strongest servants are. Give Caesar ACE that gives him starting MP charge so it's easier for him to get his MP since he only has one arts card, and clear second wave with his and Caster Liz's MPs. Save your support saber's MP for a third wave since Caligula is really dangerous due to his crit skill, and your support saber should be able to clear the proto homunculi in one shot before they get to do anything. Make sure to have Hans with Dragon's Meridian and high enough MP charge skill level so that he can get his MP immediately and use it to provide HP regen to the party in case anyone's injured, and bring in whoever your strongest servants are in the last two slots, since Caligula is a Zerk and you just need to do enough damage to him to finish him off. The sixth quest looks like this. The Wyvern Origin in the second wave has a skill that grants itself invul, so keep that in mind. You'll want to use St. George, Assassin Chiki, Ushi, Support Kentoki or Herc with Limit Broken K-Scope, or Support Dante's, Hans, and Lu Bu. Again, St. George for tanking the first wave to buy time for everyone to charge MPs. You don't have to worry about shielding George with Evade or Invil since he'll have class advantage this time. Your highest priority, then, here is to get Shiki her MP so that she can assassinate the wife in Origin since you can insta-kill it, and if it ever gets the chance to pop its invul, well, Shiki's mystic eyes can just bypass it so everything works out. For third wave, your strategy here depends on what kind of support you've taken. I personally recommend that you try to bring a friend's Kintoki or Herc if at all possible so that you can just get rid of Amakusa fast, since the MP removes buffs including things like invul and evade, so there's no way for you to tank it, because even though Dante is as a an Avenger has class advantage against rulers, his MP charge gain isn't that great since he only has one arts card, and perhaps a subpar MP charge gain rate. But you could use a command spell to get his MP charge instantly, and do massive damage against both Jean and Amakusa if you're not against using command spells. The point is, kill Amakusa first, and then Jean, because she can't really do much else to you. 
Just bring a few Berserkers in the back line to help get rid of John faster if you want. The seventh and final quest is split into two parts, and the first part is this. The Colossal Ghost is a special boss, so insta-killing isn't effective against it. But you're only fighting ghosts here, and they're all assassins, so just bring a team of casters that preferably has media in it for meme breaker spamming. The second part, however, has you fight Dante's by himself. Remember that Avengers aren't weak to anything but Berserkers, and they're effective against both Rulers and Berserkers, too. This is where you kind of have to come up with your own team according to what your account has, but if you can, try to bring St. George, Assassin Shiki, Ushi, Support Kintoki, or Herc with Limit Broken K-Scope, Hans, and Lu Bu. George can buy you time with this taunt. Shiki is probably the best welfare to bring here since she's the only one with a single target MP and has an evade skill. Ushi also has a strong single target MP. Your support Kintoki or Herc should be doing the majority of the damage. In fact, if you have a friend who's got Herc with Snow Castle, he could actually solo this probably. Hans for support and Lubu for extra Berserker damage. You could also bring a support waiver for better, more consistent buffs and MP charge, but just know that Dante's is going to hit pretty damn hard either way. So once you've done all the quests, you'll get the following items. 18 Hero Proofs, 21 Evil Bones, 6 Dragon Fangs, 13 Voids Dust, 4 Crystals, 6 Lanterns, 2 Gears, 5 Homunculus Babies, 3 Talons, 4 Hearts, 5 All Class Gold XP Cards, 1 Assassin Monument, 1 Caster Monument, 1 Berserker Monument, 2 Saber Monuments, 6 Summoning Tickets, and 1 Lore. Hopefully this video has helped out in some way, and again, remember that this video is only intended to help you guys figure out what kinds of team compositions that you guys want to build to beat these challenge quests. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Enjoy the quests and the banners, though try not to pull too too much salt now since we all know that we'll have enough of that in a month.